Hey guys, I'm back with another episode of Mental Wealth. This podcast is used to express thoughts, experiences, and lessons. I aim to be as transparent as possible. If you enjoy an episode, please don't forget to like, comment, and tell a friend. Thank you. It's hard for me to do it because I'm so invested in my crab, you know, because at the day, like when you're chasing greatness sometimes, you don't know how to stop. Like, <laughs> that, that'd be the problem. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to tweet that. No, for sure. I mean, because yeah. no, like it really, like, all right. We back to you guys with another episode of Mental Wealth for today's guest. I have Mike Sawyer. Mike Sawyer is an all conference four time team captain, Washington Commanders mini camp invitee, has eight years plus performance coaching, member of the Omega Sci Fi fraternity, and a soon to be father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, brother, man. What, what it do, man? What it do? Not, not much. Can't call it, man. Can't call it. Yeah, man. Same old, same old. Just striving and grind. Yes, sir. But can you give us a little bit, a little bit of background on your career? Who is Mike Sawyer? Man, who is Mike Sawyer, man? You know, you can go all the way back to the city, man. Back in Baltimore, you know, just a little kid with a with a dollar and a dream, you know. So. Pretty much starting in uh, Baltimore, born and raised all my life. Pretty much came up from West Baltimore, Park Heights to be exact, over there on Oakley Avenue for my, my Baltimoreans that know. But then, you know, from there, had some time with my family and pretty much been moving place to place. And then finally, pretty much stayed over West Baltimore and things like that. From there, you know, you know, growing up, man, you know, it was pretty much like, like, for real, for real. We had some rough times, you know, but at the end of the day, I thank my parents, you know, for, you know, their tremendous support and their dedication and hard work, you know, continue to strive, continue to grind, you know, not complaining, not really making nothing wave, you know, and continuing to, you know, like, make sure me and my little sister seen life through, you know. Then from there, you know, went on to Calvin Hall, played high school football there, basketball track. Then from there, had a stellar career at Culver Hall, then proceeded to play uh, Division II football at uh, West Virginia Wesleyan College. And I was that Buck County, West Virginia. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, the crazy trenches, the crazy trenches down there, man. Um, but it's definitely a different environment from Baltimore. You know, definitely an eye opener, a di- uh, culture shock to me. But, you know, just being from Baltimore and different things like that, you know, it's a whole different environment. You know, when you're from the trenches, man, it's a whole different or then ball game, then you coming out to the mountains, you know, it's cold, you know, then you got, he's definitely a different, whole different environment. But uh, there at uh, West Virginia Wesley, you know, played football. For, well, I was uh, there for five years, pretty much had, got my exercise science degree from there. And then I went on to transfer to Concord University, where I pretty much played football again there as well. Finished up with a master's degree in um, public health. But man, one, like one thing I can say, through my years of football and different things like that. Like what made me, me was just, you know, really just putting my head down and like just not even letting, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's like, like I really put my head down in darkness. That's kind of where I made my money at, you know, it's kind of the grind just going underneath, you know, and then not letting nobody, you know, interrupt my space, staying away from distractions and just, you know, a lot of things, a lot of good things came out of that, you know, then having a chance, you know, to, uh, have a shot at the league and different things like that, you know, it's like, you know, all those times of dark nights, you know, just sweating, blood, and tears and all that, you know, it's oh God. a whole different, whole different game. So really what made me, bro, is just, you know, content, dedication, hard work, bro. So I was really saying God, you know, and family, <laughs> you really, that's my foundation right there. What do you think the biggest lesson you learned when you look back on your career? Um, the biggest lesson? Um, I would say is um, I know a lot of times a lot of people say not um, not to live with, you know, regrets, you know, and but one thing, you know, I regret, you know, is not enjoying a lot of those moments a lot more, you know, just in life and um, football and just going throughout, you know, that whole college path, um, pro football, just growing up from a kid, you know, you know, you like you can talk about like how fast life moves until you really get there and like look back and like it's like, man. Like, all those times flew by, but I never really truly, like, sat down and, like, man, like, this is a good moment. You know, really take pictures, really cherish those moments, those memories with those those who you love and different things like that. So that's kind of just one big, huge lesson, you know, just enjoying the moments, cherish everything around you. Nothing guaranteed in this life. And what's what's one of the best moments you can look back on and think of in your career? 
Shoot. Something I won't never forget. Uh, it, it's really like two moments, um, like I could say. Um, and, like, as far as college football, it really um, was, like, my first interception, um, for sure, was probably the biggest moment, like, I know that really changed me and made me, like, that guy, you know, because that following year, you know, that sophomore year after that freshman, that freshman year, you know, after that first interception, it was like, man, like, it's, I'm here, you know, so definitely got to, you know, continue just to make plays. And then, you know, another time was my final game, you know, um, at uh, – we had that. I mean, you was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know how it went, man. It was a six overtime game. You know, one of the most exciting games I ever played in. Um, definitely was like up and down. You know, I mean, I honestly like that first quarter. I know I ain't played my best, but um, then you know, kind of got settled. Things happened, but you know, to come out with a dub in six overtimes, you know, there's nothing more chilling than that. Yes, sir. I agree. I definitely remember that game. Oh God. Can you describe the emotional? process of transitioning from being an athlete to a non-athlete hmm. or you man that's that's something i think about every day um a lot of people that really know me um like mostly my family and everybody you know that really been around my whole life know like when i transitioned uh from kind of you know if i mean honestly let's let's put it like this it started with uh the washington mini camp uh, invite, you know, that um, I went out there, um, had my chance with them. Uh, but then I ended up pulling my hamstring, you know. So right there was kind of like, you know, I was having a great, t- like the first day at camp, you know, having a great day. The second day you come out, fine, they got me on punt. They got me doing all special teams. They got me doing a kickoff. I'm like, all right, man, it's a good day. Making plays in the seven on sevens, then come up to this one opportunity on the deep ball and you end up pulling your hamstring, you know. It's like when everything you had in your hand, you know, and then everything just, boom. You know how cutthroat the NFL is, you know, and that was real hard for me because I, I ain't going to lie. I went I went back home to my parents, and I sat up all night and cried, bro, because it was probably one of the hardest times ever, you know. It's like you had that that huge opportunity, life-changing money, you know, and starting to be on really the, like a top corner in the league. You know, that, that would always would have been a dream of mine, but, you know, that was definitely something very hard, you know, that I had to deal with. Um, I honestly, like, I sat up depressed, you know, and then kept blaming myself, like, why this, why that, why that, you know. But the biggest thing there that I learned, you know, you got to have your faith put everything in God's hands because, like, it's he always got another plan for you. So, you know, after that situation, got back on my feet, got a job and different things like that, and the canal is kind of the biggest thing right now is, you know, taking care of my family, you know, like you said, I'm about to be a bad dad and different things like that. But it's like, man, you know, it's this transition is huge, you know, because now I'm about to have a little one really looking at me, you know, and honestly saying, like, daddy, you know, you're going to be calling me dad and then I'm going to have to be his role model every single day. You know, I can't, can't let nothing waver. And, you know, as a man, you know, in this society and honestly, just in life in general, you know, you, you're going to have to got to hold your own. Or you got to stay 10 toes at all times. You know, you fold the family, for, you know, so you can't, you only can, um can't break. You know, you only can bend a little bit, but we definitely ain't going to break, you know, but, you know, but the big, like the biggest thing with that, you know, is man, it's, it's definitely, definitely feel a lot different, you know, not having to put on them shoes with your teammates and your guys. And then like all that can be gone and snap a finger, you know, that's, that's when we go back to me talking about, you know, just, like really regretting not enjoying those moments more because like you my guy bro and like just being with you in a lot of room bond cells sean merrick all them boys man it's nothing but love man and then my guys back at wesleyan wayne bridge chubbs and all them boys man it's, and then mirror come on man and the kenny and all them boys man it's, it's like it's definitely moments you know i miss just being on my guys and going out and playing for four quarters man nothing more good than that but at the end of the day, God got a plan for me. And at the end of the day, I mean, you put, you put all your tokens in plan A, you know, and then out of nowhere, you know, at the end of the day, you know, some co- some tokens are definitely going to fall on plan B, you know, and you just got to roll with it, keep striving and grinding. And can't look back. You got to do what you do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you approach the what's next at, when you got done? Um, How did I approach it? Um. Like, did you have a plan? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, in that situation, did I really have a plan? Yes, but no, Um, because honestly, in my opinion, you know, life is full of curveballs, you know, because kind of when 
you know, before I had um, the opportunity to have like a pro day and different things like that, um, I was working, I was training, different things like that. But me coming, getting done with that senior year, you know, I ain't had no agent, none of that. So it's kind of like everything is like open, free, and it's kind of like, um, you know, you kind of just looking for opportunity at that point. Um, so I would say, like, how did I really approach it, man? Because it's like, just honestly, it's like, I would say my biggest trait um, is really being adaptable. Um, that's kind of my biggest thing that I had to do with that, uh, with that situation, you know, being adaptable because, like, coming out of football, it's kind of like you don't really got nothing's guaranteed. You know, you kind of on your ass at this point, and you got to pretty much, you know, find your way. You know, so it's kind of like at this point, just tap in the training is kind of what I knew. I just fell back on what I knew. Um, that's pretty much training, you know, different things like that. And still having all that knowledge that I had from um, training all my years of life and having a chance to even, you know, train with pro football guys and different things like that. And it's like that helped me adjust, you know, and already having that knowledge and different wisdom and different, um, different perspectives from other people. It was just really just being adaptable. So kind of just went from there. And um, what strategies did you use to – like even find passions outside of sports. I know I talked to a lot of people I've played sports with and for a lot of us, once sports do become your kind of identity, most of us have been playing this game since we were six years old. So I know I've struggled with even finding something outside of playing football that I actually enjoy to do other than it being sport related. What did you do? Um, It was like that, you know, I kind of fell in love with, working out because it reminded me a lot of, you know, being in the weight room with my guys, you know, and continue like that grind, you know, in the weight room, it's like, it's definitely like being in the weight room is definitely like being on the football field, 110 percent, you know, because you kind of got to go in this mode. And if you got 300 on the bar, you feel me? At the end of the day, you're going to have to lift. You got to, you can't complain at that point. You got to move that weight, you know? Um, So it's kind of like, you know, I fell in love with the grind more than anything you know it's kind of like like my grind now is not you know preparing for four quarters on saturday now my grind is just you know knocking down all these walls in life you know and utilizing the weight room kind of keep myself motivated and continue just to wake up every day and like it's just the, the grind is kind of why i fell in love with you know and then like because the weight room kind of gave me a task at this point you know i might not be training for football but you know i'm trying to keep myself healthy keep myself longevity, keep myself in shape, you know, because at the end of the day, like I said, going back to my son, you know, at the day I want to still be able to pick him up, you know, have years and see him grow and things like that. So being in the weight room, staying healthy, you know, and then just at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm definitely just a hawk, bro, because like, it, it's like even when I'm in the weight room, you know, I still feel like I'm preparing for Saturday. I'll tell and, you. I'll I'm telling you, like, and it's like, I, I like even though I might wake up and fight like dang right I gained tomorrow and then realize <laughs> man I ain't even playing no more so it's kind of like, it is what it is you know but you know it's kind of just the grind is kind of the biggest thing I felt, fell in love with bro so how did you overcome any fears or hesitation you had about trying things new I know I I've always probably wanted to play an instrument and I know I might look weird weird as hell try to play a violin or something like that so how did you do that. I mean, like, all right, so can you, like, explain us more of them? But I know for a lot of people, I, even with me starting the podcast or me starting this YouTube channel, my original goal was to start the podcast, but I knew <laughs> nobody would watch me if I just started a podcast. So right. I started uploading content about me to make myself more interesting to people. So, right, um, I mean, like, oh, so, like, okay, okay. Um, look with that. Um, so in training, you know, yeah, it's still a lot of different avenues I can tap into. Um, as far as like training, different things like that. Um, I can really talking from the training world and like kind of the training career path for real. Um, I would say like learning different training styles or potentially opening up to different sports. You know, because like I've started training golfers. Um, you know, me like being a football player, basketball player, track runner, like speed training, different things like that. I done started training, like, golf people. Um, I done got a couple clients um, through training with golfing. You know, that's something new to me. I had to, like, take a step back and really learn how the body moves, how a golfer moves. 
or different, different uh, movement patterns, different things like that, or like going through the physical therapy world, you know, learning different, you know, different ways to like re rehabilitate people from different injuries and different things like that. So that was definitely something to tap into. Um, I still like have a high interest in even becoming a physical therapist soon, you know, it's kind of still a passion of mine because that's the, um, the career path that I kind of started with my freshman year of college, everything like that. So that's kind of um like, like two new things that I would say um, as far as the training career path, you know, in life, I'm still open to a lot of different things, you know, as far as I do want to like potentially get into real estate at home if I can. You know, owning some properties, owning some land, um, different things like that, because you know, health is wealth, and you know what else? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm very adaptable. That's all I can really say, bro, with that one. So I'm yes. open to life. They open minded in life. So, what were some of the biggest obstacles you faced in finding a purpose outside of sports? You said, can you repeat that? I say, what were some of the biggest obstacles you faced finding a purpose outside of leaving sports behind? Like that's. Like that's that's a that's a definitely a deep question. Um, you know, the I mean, it's crazy how life happens. You know, because uh, my girlfriend Jasmine, uh, she can she could definitely vouch for me with this kind of because me and I talk about it all the time. Um, about how you know, like the the way the whole pregnancy thing worked out. You know, kind of right after you know mini camp, I done pulled my hamstring. I feel like that my world is ending, you know, but, you know, I came home to, you know, some news, you know, that, you know, she was pregnant, different things like that. And, you know, I felt as though, like, God shifted my life right there at that moment. He was like, it's either you're going to sit here and pout or you're going to get back on your feet and switch your mindset now because now you got a little one about to be coming on the way. You know, and like it's crazy how much, you know, some people might look at that situation like, man, like God just throwing a bunch of obstacles at me, this, that, and the third. Like, man, I just pulled my hamstring and cap, man, I come home to a baby. Nah, but, you know, I, I mean, like at the end of the day, like I was like, wow, like this, this is like different, you know, but at the end of the day, I look at that as completely a blessing, you know, because honestly, that day forward, you know, it kind of shifted my mindset to, here, we here now, like life. You know, at the end of the day, life is always going to hit you, bro, but you're going to have to get back up because you stop now, you're going to get left behind, and you're going to be left behind a lot of walls that you got to try to fight back through, but you're going to be too late because now you're digging yourself up this hole and it's a terrible pattern, you know. But, you know, so God honestly sent me just a blessing to, to use my kid as a why, you know. So every day I wake up, I kind of, like, I have his name, you know, at my job, you know, in the weight room, you know, I have a picture of him. And... You know, I got right next to him, my why. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, every day I wake up, I got to strive for him. And him and his mother, Jasmine, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and like it, it ain't no, it ain't about me anymore. That's kind of the biggest thing where I'm at with. So, what do you think the best personal skill you learned through your athletic career that helped you transition to your purpose now? I, I say this all the time. Um, I, don't, I know you. I know you probably remember, um, like when Coach used to hit us with a sudden change. Yeah, a sudden change, and um, I think that was the biggest thing. Like, I pulled away from the sports and just life. You know, is like life can really just be flipped, like something crazy. You know, you never know, and you know, because at the end of the day, when you do that sudden change drill, you done did about four or five drills. You tired as heck and coach screaming in the middle of practice. Something changed, something changed. Ones against ones. What? I'll tell you. Like, hey man, like, what's going on out here, bro? Like, I, I'm tired, coach. I'm tired. And now we got now we we third and short, you know, and they got a bunch packing. Now the corner guy come down. You, you know, I ain't even gonna talk too much, but <laughs> yeah, over a point, but that way, you know, it's just like being ready for anything and just being adaptable adaptable in your environment, you know, because Cause life gonna throw some things at you. It's definitely you gonna sometimes you gonna really have to you gonna be really down down on your butt, man, and down bad, and you know you got to look back like why you do what you do, you know. And like at the end of the day, like your mindset got shift for him. Like like this is what we do from this is how we gonna get it done, you know. At the end of the day, so that's kind of like 
the sudden change, bro. Just be ready for anything. I'll be ready for change and, you know, just <laughs> like I always say, bro, execute. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Because you, you're not lying, though, because a lot of people yeah. spend a lot of time focusing on what's there instead of just how they're going to get it done. Yeah. So like, you, you've already psyched yourself out of even starting anyway. Right. How did you manage the mental and emotional aspects of transitioning out of sport? Did you prioritize? Did you prioritize your mental health? What did you do? Now that's that's definitely that's a good question, bro. Um, honestly, bro, I'll say this: based off how I am, um, just in life, um, it's probably not the healthiest thing. Um, I done, I like, I honestly pushed a lot of my emotion and mental health to the side. Because just based off, because sometimes me, like when I get like so invested in my craft, sometimes I kind of just forget and get numb to everything around, me, you know, and that's that for real is kind of something that I have probably shouldn't have done, you know, based off because, you know, sometimes, you know, you get in like you don't know how to control your emotions and really, you know, like do it in a healthy way and be able to speak and communicate to people properly, you know, based off, you know, you just so focused on this, you know, you kind of don't prioritize really just sitting down, meditating, relaxing, you know, really taking those rest days, taking those, that time to yourself, that self-care that you really need, you know, and that's something I honestly, like, right, right off rip, I didn't do, you know, which I should have, because at the end of the day, like, I was in an emotional roller coaster. I felt like at first, you know, but like I said, the type of person I am, I kind of just put my head down and then kind of ignore it, but it's kind of hurting me at the same time, you know? So, but that's something I'm trying to be better now as really just taking that time, like to really rest, you know, every now and then just take a day to yourself, take some time away from life, like just put everything down, you know, because I mean, because still, still to this day, like my, like uh, Jazz can tell you, man, like I, I will sit down on my phone because I'm so worried about my business. Like, and I, I won't get off my phone sometimes. And it's hard for me to do it because I'm so invested in my crab, you know, because at the day, like when you're chasing greatness sometimes, you don't know how to stop. Like, that'd be the problem. That'd be I'm the problem. Tweet, you know? I'm going to have to no, tweet, No, for, no, for sure. I mean, because no, like, it really, like, only people that really know, like, that been in the trenches, bro, understand, like, when you come from a dark place and you just come up and then you don't, like, you're not trying to come back down. I'm you, telling you. You're, 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 you're on this high, and it's like, okay, let's continue to maintain. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's something we all got to get better at as human, as natural. It's just really just learn how to control our emotions and really get, like, really tapping back in, bro. Because at the end of the day, if you're not okay, nobody, like, like not you can't really do nothing, you know. Because at the end of the day, you, it, it got to be you first before anybody, you know. And that, that comes with mental health, spiritual health, you know, like, like physical health, whatever, you know. At the end of the day, like, you got to. Like you gotta really just take a step back, time relax, you know, just so you can be you again. You know, that's the biggest thing now. So, yeah, I, I I often find you're not the only man I talk to, but I often find men in general they tend to numb themselves to what's going on around them, so they can so they don't take the emotional baggage with them. But we tend to numb ourselves so much that we don't even know how to express our feelings, and I've been that same way. But, right. No, that, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, because, like, males in general, like, I know my father, you know, I can speak for him when he said, like, my father, man, like, he, he's a broken man, you know, like, honestly, coming from where he come from, you know, um, uh, over there on East Baltimore, different things like that, you know, it's like, it was a rough time, you know, but one thing that, I, that like, I can see in my father and always, that he, like, he's broken, but he's a very strong man, you know, he done, he done raised me my whole life, and he did a very good job with me. You know, him and my mom, you know, they like, they ain't come from the best past, you know, but at the end, they, they found a way, you know, to, like, really make way and strive for us. But it's like, you know, within that time, you know, because even, like, mostly, I would say, like, people in their generation, like, they were really numb, you know, to, like, all pain, anything, because, like, people to this day, like, man, they, like, parent, like, people in that generation sometimes look at us, like, us, you know, in today's generation, because, you know, some people are open up by mental health. Everything like like they look at us as soft sometimes. Yeah, you know, our generation you. sometimes, but a lot of them don't realize you hurt yourself a lot because you didn't or wasn't willing to open up about your mental health and everything like that. You know, so that's just something that's really you know that we gotta look at. You know, and really understand like yo mental health. You really gotta open up sometimes. Like it, it, it'll help you and then you know just release, 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 release. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your support system. How did your family, friends, mentors, dad, how did everybody help you in finding your what you're what you doing now? Man, um <laughs> my support system, man, is it's a very strong empire. I wouldn't even call it a support system at this point. It's a, it's a darn empire. And you know, my like especially going to my immediate household with my mom, my dad, my little sister, you know, starting with them, you know, since I was playing peewee football all the way up to like college ball. They didn't miss one more. All the way up to my college pro day to be exact. They didn't miss one more. You know, my like if my mom wasn't there, my dad was there. If my dad wasn't there, my mom was there, you know, different things like that. So it's like then them, they got my cousins, uncles, especially for sure my girlfriend Jazz, man. Like it's it's really an empire, you know, it's like the amount of support that they have given me throughout my entire life is nothing like it's nothing but the best, bro. And it's truly a blessing, you know, to have them, especially like going down from the kid, man, this is nothing but a village behind, nothing but a village, you know, and I, I'm just so thankful and grateful for them, you know, and like not missing a thing, you know, and they continue to motivate me. And that's what kept me going. You know, that's what made me, you know, is my family. Like I said, God, family, football, bro, like whatever, man, it's, it's like that right there was my foundation, you know, without them continuing to tell, telling me the right from wrong, do, do this, do that, you know, and then just. Like making sure I keep my head up high and keep me above, you know, it's man, I'm just like that's all I can really say, man. It's like I'm just so thankful because tremendous, like they ain't wavered with nothing, man. Tay ten toes the whole way. So what advice would you give current athletes preparing for the end of their athletic career? What would I say to them? I would say like don't take nothing for granted and understand that. Like, nothing is promised or nor is it guaranteed, you know, because there's a lot of people out here. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen them, like, when in college football in general, like, it's a lot of guys that just put on jerseys. You know, a lot of guys just like to wear jerseys, and, like, they don't really take nothing too serious, or they just come they just come out there to show up to practice or, like, and then just run around with, their, like, a head, like a chicken with their head cut off or something like that, whatever. And... So those are guys that's taking those moments, that time that coaches invest in you, other teammates invest in you and taking it for granted, you know, and like that type of stuff, it honestly, it made me cringe on the inside being the type of ball player I was, you know, looking at that because it's like, man, I'm out here busting my butt trying to treat every day like it's my last, you know, and I got people around me that's not willing to pull their own weight, you know, so it hurts, you know, like, you know, but at the end of the day, like, for those guys, like, really going to the end of their career, man, it's like, don't take nothing for granted, you know, because you're going you gonna to look back one day. And that's the crazy thing. I always t- I tell people I train this and the kids I train this all the time. One day you're going to look back. You're going you gonna to be looking back like, man, like, how was my career? And then it's either you're going to be you gonna be the person that be like, man, I wish I did that. I wish I did that. Like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Or you're going to be that person that was like, man, that was a hell of a career. I enjoyed and played every game like my last. I ain't leave nothing out there. I, I emptied the tank, you know, at the end of the day. You know, so it's really two ways you can go about it. You know, at the end of the day, we want to be the person that emptied that tank, gave it all, you know, understood that nothing was guaranteed. So why not give him up? You know, so that's really the biggest thing that is like really living with, no, like I said, again, living with no regrets. You know, I got it tied on me, man, and that's something I live by forever. Always like I mean, cause like I said, the only regret that I live live with man is just not enjoying moments just a little. So, how have your goals and aspirations changed since you left the sports world? Goals and aspirations changed. It went from I would say my goal and aspirations went from trying to go to the league to really just living a life comfortable for Mike, you know, and like it went from like just really. Like living a life to just where me and my and my family that I got, you know, is taken care of and we is happy. Like we are like truly just happy individuals and you know, that's really the biggest thing that is I'm just like just really enjoying that time with my family, embracing that. Yeah, I ain't really got too much. And that was kinda it. You know, it's really just make sure I had come to life for me and my family. So do you feel more fulfilled now than when you were an athlete or the other way around? 
Okay. What did you say? You, you I know. say, do you feel more fulfilled now or when you were an athlete? I say now, because now I feel like I'm more full of life. Um, I felt like when I was playing football, it was like I was just waking up to play football. I wasn't really living, Damn. you know, versus now, like with like without football, it's kind of like you, now you get to see the other side of life, you know, because now it's kind of like, man, you ain't you ain't butting heads with everybody <laughs> four quarters, you know, hurting yourself and all that pain, all that blood. And like I said, all them. I just sweat and tears, you know, it's kind of like you are like really seeing life for what it is now. You know, you, you having kids or, you know, you want to go like, like fulfill your career path or what you want to do or, you know, you buying a new car, buying a new house, you know, that like that's like the other side of life that, you know, instead of just learning about the XOs all the time, now you learn about those, that new aspect of life, you know, that you never really thought like, man, like, man, you like, because we playing football, I like, I don't know what you, man, it felt like. I'm like, man, this crap gonna last forever. Yes, I. That's really how I felt in that moment, you know. But then you get to that finish line, it's like, oh shoot, like I'm, I'm, I'm here. Like, oh damn, I'm really about to be done with this, bro. Like, you no, know, but and now it's like really like life, man. It's it's so interesting, bro. It's it's a blessing, bro. I'm telling you, and man, like now you get to see life for really what it is, bro. And you know, you learn you learn a lot more now than you did. You know, being on a football field all the time, you wasn't paying paying attention to a lot of those things that you should have, you know. But now it's honestly just it's honestly good that you're here now. You no, know? so now I definitely feel more fulfilled now, bro. Like I'm, 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 I'm loving where I'm. Do you like? Do you? How do you feel that's affected your identity? I know that's a big part of us. So how mm -hmm. do you? How has that affected your identity? <laughs> I would put it in the aspect of like when I'm training, because sometimes, you know, some of these kids like, you know, don't really have that same passion for the game like you got. So like I would say, like, say I see like somebody like really lacking on a set or something or not going up and wait. It really the athlete Emmy really comes out because I'm like, man, what are you doing over there? You bull crapping this, that, and the third. Nah, I'm really tearing up, bro. And like, I'm talking about, I'm letting them have it. But then I like, gotta take a step back, like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not there no more, bro. Like, like you gotta understand, some of these kids not gonna take your delivery, you know, the same as like a teammate would. Yeah. You know, and you know, it's, it's definitely a hard transition sometimes because like that passion and love I got for the game, uh, comes out all the time, you know, and like even with, even with people, you know, like people that have like not just in training, you know, like I, like somebody might have a crazy mindset about something, and you kind of like, man, like what, like why do they think like that, you know, or like 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 why a certain person think like that, and it's kind of like maybe they, they don't got that same drive or that passion or that strive that you do, and it's kind of like man, I can't hang around them, different things like that. I mean, but it's so much that they really go into it, you know. But yeah, that's. That's definitely it though. Like it just it comes out sometimes. So is it anything? Is is it anything I'm missing? Is it anything that I should have asked? I didn't ask. How 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 do you think I've done so far? My first time. It was. I mean, honestly, this was cool. It was a cool conversation, bro. And we definitely. You. I mean, you opened up my mind a little bit. Had had me thinking a little bit. I ain't gonna lie with some of these questions. Bro. So definitely, yes. I think it was good. And honestly, I I, mean, I definitely appreciate you know for you know allowing me to you know talk to you and you asking these questions, bro. Because. I said it's it's good to sometimes be able to release some of these things, you know, and like I said, again, getting back to that mental health, communicating and different things like that, and, and it kind of helped, you know, to really talk about these things because these are like like these are things I live with now, you know. Yeah. These are like sometimes like sometimes it's some scars, you know. Sometimes it's some things I itch that itch at, like you know, like I still itch at the game, you know. And, and talking about it sometimes, man, you know, it's like life flash thing, but like before your eyes, you know, it's just sometimes good just to talk about it. Yeah, I, the, the main reason why I even chose you anyway, because I know when I talk to my little cousins or when I talk to younger players, or they haven't really yet understood what it really takes to get where they really want to be. And they haven't understood what they need to sacrifice. And they haven't understood what they like outside of the game. So then I thought it was good to interview you because, shit, I learned so much from you that everybody can learn something from you. For sure. I mean, like doing the little things. I mean, that that's really where it started with me, and that's something I preach to people all the time: is just doing every single little 
thing, bro. Going to class, you know, going a little extra 30 minutes, watching film with that extra hour, you know, doing the extra overtime, you know, just putting everything into that craft, bro. Like I said, you get invested into that jump. Fall in love with the process, you know, a lot of good things going to come out of that. I swear, every single time. Yes, sir. I think I, I think I'm gonna end it there then. Yeah. Now, hold on, man. A real quick though, you know, shout out to my like, I just want to say a quick shout out, real quick. Shout out to you know be on brand training, the heroes, you know, Jazz and my, my girlfriend, the, the mother of my child, man. Shout out to my new newborn baby that's coming soon, man, Ozias, man. Welcome to him to the world. Shout out to Kasha, Taylor, um, my father Mike, man, and all my cousins, uncles, family, brothers, everybody, man, and especially you, man. You know, you and my guys in the Salt and Pepper crew, man. You already know what it is, man. Concord, my guys, my Wesleyan brothers, man. Just shout out to everybody that played a part in this whole process, man. And just life and honestly molding me to the man I am today, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Just complete love, you know, and peace, man. For real. Yes, sir. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be back with you guys for another one. Peace.